I'm Jamie. I'm Joe, and welcome back to another episode of Ambitious Films and where we review them. After the raging success of the last episode where we reviewed Submarine, we simply had to follow that up. I thought we'd give the audience what they want, and here we are. We're here, back again, for a second episode. This time, we are reviewing Train Spotting, which is there. Did you bring the book? I did not bring the book, and I said I would. It's also a book. A film released in 1996 by Danny Boyle, and I think it was Ewan McGregor's first kind of breakthrough film. It was his breakthrough film, really, and made him a more mainstream and appreciated actor. If you had to put Train Spotting in a box as to what the film was about, what is it about? I think it's a social comment on kind of young adults feeling that there's not a lot to do other than turn to hardcore drug. It's a very unfiltered view, isn't yeah. it? You get every side of drug addiction. And I also quite like, because obviously there'll be a lot of stereotypes of drug addicts, I mm-hmm. like that they portray them as just normal people as well. Because there's a line in it where he's like, we're not stupid. If we didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't do it. Yeah. And it's kind of that point, isn't it? There's a reason why people get into it. It needs reasons when, when you've, you've got, got heroin. heroin. Exactly. If you've not watched this film, we would advise that you go away and watch it now. Unfortunately, it's not on any streaming services I can find. And so yeah, hop out, get yourself a find, copy. Find a legal means to watch it. Uh, if you can't, well, we won't say anything. You're back. Now then, let's talk about it. Right. The main character. Main character, Mark Renton. Mark Renton. Rent boy. Who is, who is Renton? So he's a young guy who is in a group of friends, and mm-hmm. they all do drugs, basically, mm-hmm. don't they? And seems to me as someone who was fairly dissatisfied with life before drugs. That's very much the impression it gives at the beginning of the yes. film, yeah. I feel like the opening scene is a very good place to start with Renton, Definitely. obviously. It's highly narrated throughout the film, which for me, again, gives a great insight into the character Absolutely. and lets you get into the head very quickly. And the beginning bit... It's him running down it James' is... Street in Edinburgh, isn't it? Kind of because yeah. they've robbed someplace. Yeah. They? yeah. That seems very important and it comes back again later in the yeah. film. But um, for the first time it's shown, it's very much, look how great drugs are, we're having a great time, you know, we're running away from the cops, but it's all great. We've shed all these... The shackles of shackles. worrying about normal things in life, like, you don't need it, that's all rubbish. That very much sums him up at the beginning of the film, I feel. Then it goes on, and it moves past heroin for a little bit, and moves on to establishing the normality of all the characters. Yeah. So, like, with Sick Boy, it's all the stuff about Sean Connery. Yeah, and then going to the park and shooting, like, dogs and stuff. And it says a lot about him as a person without telling you, you know, this is Sick Boy. Yeah, they managed not to do it through exposition. It's similar with Begbie, isn't it, when he tells the story... Yeah. Chucks the glass and he's like, that was Begbie's story. And then Tommy tells the real story. Yeah. And by Tommy telling the story about Begbie, you learn about Tommy. And then alongside all of that, the way that Renton is reacting throughout tells you more about him. Actually, yeah, you kind of start to see what he likes and dislikes about yeah. him and kind of his real feelings yeah. towards him. Because you get the impression that he has a soft mm-hmm. spot for Tommy and for Spud. Yeah doesn't really like Sick Boy. I feel like Sick Boy is kind of his, his best friend who just gets on his nerves a bit. Yeah, I think so, because when Renton says that uh, he's going to quit, he says that uh, Sick Boy uh, decided to quit with me just because he wanted to prove how easily he could do it. So we're about 20 minutes into the film. We We've are. met all the characters, and we know all about who they are. As soon as they've got past that bit, they dive into sort of the problems. It's actually slightly before that, isn't it? The him trying to get off it for the first time, and he yes. uses the sick boy method. The worst toilet in the, the toilet in scene, yeah. I think that's really cool. Because mm. there's a lot of bits like that later on where he sinks into the carpet yeah. after overdosing. But the bit where he goes into the toilet, I think, is really cool. I, m- I remember not getting it the first time. Yeah. Because it's what... like, why is he suddenly... Yeah, that's... I was thinking about this earlier. What do you think it means? I think on the surface, it, it just seemed like him trying to imagine it as like a beautiful kind mm-hmm. of cool and kind of crisp underwater scenario yeah. instead of the horrible... Mm-hmm shitty toilet that it actually is but on the other hand it could be a a kind of a metaphor for the extremes people go through to get said pills that he then finds that's what i was thinking yeah yeah. so the dirty toilet is theft is lying Mm. and all the stuff that people go through just to get the hit but it's very early on and it's very well disguised so that it's sort of hinting that yes without saying it blatantly too early on definitely so he's got off it and then very quickly they go back onto it after they they've do, been yeah. out clubbing. And I feel like the clubbing scene is um, like them going back into the real world yes. and then finding they don't like it and then so having to leave again. Isn't there a line you says before it, like in regards to that? The the problem with um, with not being on heroin is or is like something like that. You have I, to deal you, with you have to deal with your friends that was entirely it. sober. That was it. Yeah. 
I feel like that whole club scene, that whole bit is very clever the way it's done. Yeah. Because it's like them jumping back into the real world. They delve around in there a bit and then it seems like a good thing at first. And then there's the three sex scenes going on at once. Yeah, oh, I love that bit because he meets Diane. Diane. But they're very different experiences for each of them because... Yeah. Obviously, Renton accidentally took the sex tape, yes. didn't he? Well, from... not accidentally. He did it on purpose. Did he? I thought, yeah. I thought no, because he was like, can I borrow this? Yeah. And then he but puts he swapped it in. for tapes. I thought he'd accidentally... No. Was... no he Why did, did he do it on purpose? Apparently, that's what people do. You know, if you find your mate sex tape lying around, that's what you do, you know? I remember thinking like, oh, if it hadn't been for that, then Tommy wouldn't have died, basically. And that's almost a comment on what drugs would do to you, yeah. in a way, because it's like, oh yeah, because it makes you stop caring about other exactly. people. Exactly. Also, kind of how easily you can be pushed over the edge. And if you're in an emotionally vulnerable state, which a lot of beginner addicts are, mm-hmm. then it'll be it's so easy to just get sucked into mm-hmm. it, because it becomes your go-to to make whatever yeah. pain you're feeling better, yeah. you associate it mm-hmm. with it. The thing that gets me about sex scenes is usually they put sex scenes in films so they can be like, oh, look, it's got sex in it. It's the Come token watch. sex scene, yeah. You know, they'll put in the trailer yeah. for a split second. But in this, it's not in there for the sex scene. It's in there for a build-up to a knockdown almost. Yeah. Because it cuts them all together and then it starts off and they're all great and they're all having a great time and then it builds up to something bad. Yeah. Yeah, so there's one with Tommy and that's going well and then they find out that the sex tape, sex tape is missing and then that explodes in his face. Yes. And it sets something up bad for later on. Yeah. Spud is unconscious and <laughs> eventually shits and, himself. Yeah. So he's sort of the next one who goes wrong and he shit the bed. And yeah. then he manages to throw it all over his girlfriend's like house and yeah. family. Which sets him up to go back onto drugs. And then the one with Renton is he it, seems it like he's so done well. well. Yeah. And then he wakes up and he kicks, he's... She kicks him out the room and he's like, what's going on? Wakes up and she's what? Underage. Yeah. She's a schoolgirl. He is not a schoolboy. No. He's too old. Finds her. himself in it's a very a tricky illegal. situation. Yeah. A bit illegal. Yeah, so the sex scenes aren't there for the sex. They're to build up the conflict and throw them back into drugs and this time set up the fact that it's a bad experience. And it also shows that kind of anything bad that goes on, the safety mattress is drugs. Well, actually, just before they do that, there's the great outdoor scene. Renton does his whole speech of the thing about... It's shite being Scottish. And I think that's quite a clever way of showing how he resents his situation. Yes, actually. And the people around him. It's exactly that, isn't it? Because all along he's been putting up this version of himself, but suddenly he snaps and this yeah. dissatisfied, it's quite all... bitter person comes out and you kind of see why he got bored and turned to drugs, really. Yeah. And when he's sort of bitching about Scotland, I yeah. feel like that's him talk- bitching about his friends almost. Actually, Because yeah. they're all Scottish, and so it's saying, look, we as a collection, the Scottish, we're all awful. Yeah. Why are we saying that it's great to be like this? Actually, yeah. Shite, you know? So when he says Scotland, he means kind of his life and the situation he's in. So they go back on trucks. Tur- like, the turning point is when they're all high and lying around... And then you hear Alison screaming. Uh, it just like snaps them out, doesn't it? Yeah. Just screaming. And the baby has died, and it's ve- a very graphic visual way it of is. saying, "Look it's how awful, awful this is." And a very and look what it does. I thought it was a very powerful scene in terms of the characterization of sick boy. Mm. Shows a very different side to him because he cries, doesn't he? And you realise he's yes, the he dad. Does. And that's I feel like that's the turning point for sick boy because up to then he's sort of been happy and charismatic and jolly. Yeah. Whereas after that, he sort of turns, and that's... It was, it was never quite the same again, no, which he I isn't. think Renton points out, doesn't yeah. he? And then this is the bit where it catches up to the beginning of the film again. This time, it's got a very different light to it, because at the beginning, it's all like, oh, look how great drugs yeah. are, we're running around from the police. This time, it's very desperate. Yeah, it's very... sort of like, it's all awful, look at the depths we've had to go to to Just carry to on hit. Yeah. using drugs. And the tone turns very quickly there. That's a good point, actually. And yeah. there's that classic bit where Begby like lands on the car and looks at the driver and like laughs like oh my god this is that's Renton, crazy Renton that's yeah. what I meant at the beginning of filming you're like oh look he's having a great time he's laughing yeah this time he's kind of laughing he's like oh my god it's kind of mad what, what the hell is yeah. going on this is all insane so then Spud and him are caught and yeah. Spud gets sent to prison and he does the whole kind of thank you with God's help I'll conquer this terrible affliction yeah obviously lying because well, he, he tries a little bit but he can't get off of heroin and there's know. a bit that kind of represents that you know when he he's kind of balancing on the wall and then he you, it's like which side do i go and then he jumps off and he lands and he's in uh, yeah, mother he's superior's in... room and he's like they do the yeah. whole restaurant bit and that's when he overdoses yeah because he sort of sinks into the floor yeah and he's it, what, 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 do you, what, what would you call it field of view 
his field of view, yeah, shrinks. Peripheral vision just, yeah. Yeah, there's none. It's like almost, you know, when people are dying, like they see the lights? Yeah. It's like that. It's, it's like, like that, yeah. Um, but it's so, everything's so getting close smaller. To that. Yeah. And Mother Superior yeah. Cat looks down at him, like. Yeah. The other thing I thought was it's almost as though he's in a grave. Yes. And he's looking up. He's be- about to be, like, buried. I bet, yeah, and he's wait- just waiting for the soul to be checked yeah. on top. Yeah, that's a good point. A bit that I really like about that scene is when Mother Superior starts dragging him out. You see the ambulance driving, then it drives past the street yeah. he's on, and you realise Mother yeah. Superior's just called a taxi. And I like yeah. that kind of, the way it tricks you into thinking, oh, he's called an ambulance or and then it kind of almost slaps you in the face mm-hmm. of the film and says, don't be stupid, if, you know, these people aren't that good. And then, obviously, the, there's the bit where he shakes off the addiction, which I think's incredibly well done, the way very it shows powerful. the sort of the restlessness and the... Very scary scene, yeah. actually. Very disturbing yeah. with um, characters that he's been responsible for coming in and out, yeah. like it's, Tommy. It's all, all the ones he sort of feels guilty for come in exactly. and are there and... Um, almost attack him but it's it's the fact that they'd film him with such close-ups and a lens that sort of like bends the light yeah. around him and slightly the room kind of lengthens doesn't yeah. it and it kind of distorts everything yeah. and when he um the bit where he starts screaming his eyes are all puffed up yeah that especially is really quite hard to watch yeah. very well acted yeah because yeah. it's so raw and just like yeah. he genuinely seems yeah. terrified and it's because the baby's like right above him yeah. on the ceiling and he's like absolutely screaming his head off because it's like he he's facing up to the responsibility yeah. that kind of they all had really. Yeah. There was a baby around and they were just there taking drugs. And then it falls on him and it, that's about when it ends. And then you jump to Tommy who um, has got HIV. And I feel like the flat of Tommy's when you go to it this time is it, it changes, massively it? juxtaposed with the original. Before he had like a bench and everything. Yeah, he was and doing weights the, with. the weights are very colourful as well. Yes. So everything's quite bright in that Actually, that's in the that point, scene. yeah. And then you go to it this time and it's all dank and dark and very sort of grim. It's very kind of, it's a lot of imagery kind of representing where he is in his yeah. life and his mindset really, isn't it? Yeah. And, and he's just got this little bed mattress in the corner, hasn't yeah. he? And Renton then goes off to London after that. He, that. he kind of distances himself from that life, doesn't he? He gets um, a job as... An estate agent. An estate agent, yeah, of course. <laughs> Selling houses and yeah. it's sort of everything he's resented at the beginning of the film. He's doing and he's kind of enjoying. Yeah. To a degree. But then... Begbie turns up because he performed an armed robbery. Of course, yeah. Which it wasn't armed, apparently, and he's just got this toy gun. Yeah, you can tell how put out Renton is by it. Begbie starts kind of asserting his dominance, doesn't he? Yeah. And threatening him. Ben Sick Boy turns up. Yes. And sells his TV for money. Mm. And they're sat there eating fish and chips, and Renton's just like, why would you even think of that? Renton has changed, and he knows what's reasonable and what's not but sick boy's still very of that mind of well, that's what we always did mm. we kind of took tvs and we sold it i like the kind of the idea that they always took from other people but didn't think about the the moral implications of that but when they do it to each other suddenly renton has a problem he's just trying to escape at that point exactly. he doesn't want that trouble and then they're, they're all suddenly moving down to london and then it sort of skips around that and they go back to um edinburgh quite quick quickly for yes. tommy's funeral um and the way he dies is sort of like the worst it's hard, case isn't it? scenario. Yeah. The fact that they were all addicted for so long and he wasn't. <laughs> he bought this kitten for his ex-girlfriend in a, as sort of a present to get her, get her back. And she was like, no, mate, I don't want to kill yeah. him. You keep it. So he does. And he started neglecting it. Yes. And it was pissing everywhere. Yeah. And then, because he had HIV, the fumes from it, like, got to him and started causing something to go wrong in his brain, and he had a stroke and died from that. And yeah. that's just so grim, and the way des- they describe it is he died lying face down in his own vomit. And then they get themselves into the investment situation because of Sick Boy, who now considers himself a businessman. Yes. He manages to get a deal with the d- dude who sells Renton the laxatives earlier on. Yes. Renton doesn't want a part in it, but then it brings back the sort of, it's your mates, there's nothing you can do about exactly. it. Exactly. He's chosen as the one to test out the drugs, isn't yeah. he? And then they're on the bus going down. Yeah. And you can see Begbie's like really anxious about he it. Is, because yeah. if he gets caught with all these drugs, he'll pretty much go down for life. And so Renton, to piss him off, has a, a hit on the bus and... He says, this would be my final hit, but there's final hits and and there's there's final final hits. hits. And I feel like that's important. You know, the fact that so many times people are like, yeah, I'm going to give it up. Because he has has several final hits. It sort of really emphasises that it's a cycle and it's so difficult to break out. And then 
I just love all the sort of final scenes because there's so much tension being there built is, up. Yeah. So there's a bit on the bus and then they get to the hotel room. And there's a possibly one of my favourite shots in the whole film in there. Like the music completely stops in that scene. There's no music. Whereas there has been like all the way sort of building up to that point. Everything goes so silent and then they give the drugs to the guy who they're sending them to and he takes them into the bathroom for the guy to test. And then there's just a really long shot of Beg B and Sick Boy. Beg B gets out a pack of cigarettes and gets one for himself. Yeah. And then Sick Boy is like feeding around in his yeah. pockets. And he just like gives Beg B a look. And then Beg B. Because you, you know how Beg B is because he's so violent. And yeah. you know he could snap at any moment. So he like he gives him a bit of a look. And then like fumbles in his pocket and like chucks a cigarette at him. Beg B gets out a lighter. And then Sick Boy's like fumbling in his pockets for a lighter. And you just see him like look at Beg B. And Beg B again is just like... You push him in. In a lesser film, that would just be a shot, and you just sit there like, well, I know if you've shown that. But because of the way they've set up the whole sort of relationship yeah, between them the characters up the to way that they point, are. like there's so much tension in that one shot, and it's for me really powerful. It is definitely. And then obviously they come back out of the toilet and they're like, yeah, it's all good. They kind of go to the pub to celebrate, don't they? Yes, they do. And that's where it like all kicks off, and it the does. tension comes in again. I find that quite a scary scene as well, actually. With yeah. What Begbie does to that guy. Because he's beat up that guy so much, and then it's, is he going to turn on his friends? And then he does, he cuts Spud, he, well, doesn't accidentally, he? accidentally, because Spud tries to stop yeah. him. And then it's like, oh god, he really has like hurt Spud. Is he going to go further? And then luckily he doesn't rent and sort of vaguely manages to defuse the situation by he, just going along with him. Because he's it. your mate, and exactly. what can you do about him? Begley's obviously one of those people who likes to be in control. Yeah. And doesn't want to be talked down to. Yeah. And kind of, you never really find out why he's like that. But I think it's interesting that he is like that. Yeah. And then there's the final scene where he um, nicks the money. He does, yeah. But leaves some for Spud. Leaves some for Spud. Which, which I, I thought th- was great. Yeah. I like that. I was hoping he was going to and then he did. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Spud's looking at him as he's leaving, isn't he? But yeah. he doesn't say anything. No. Which I thought was interesting. The The thing about the ending is it's Renton like walking away and he's like, yeah, I'm going to use the money. I'm going to move away. I'm going to be go- like you. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to be like you. I'm going to get clean. And as he's walking towards the camera, his face slowly goes out of focus. Yeah, but he starts like, smiling. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's sort of like it's losing the focus on that world. He's finally he's, actually he's, shaking Yeah, he's it. actually he's, kind of moving out of it. He's moving that. away from it because he's moving out of focus. Yeah, I quite like that, actually. That's, yeah. that's and the sort of the, the face that he's got at that point, which is very much still the face of a druggie, yes. sort of disappears. Absolutely. And he's, it, yeah, there's something symbolic in there. I like that it's a film of kind of different chapters as well. I like that mm. there's the bit in London. I like that it, it does progress. Yeah, it's it doesn't not... get stuck in one place. It's constantly moving forward, constantly saying, now look at this bit that's awful, exactly. now look at this bit it's awful. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Overall, a brilliant film. A very unique film. Yeah, there's nothing quite like it. So what, what, what are we going to rate it out of? Out of eight trains. Out of eight trains? Yeah. How many trains would you spot out of eight trains? I'd, train think spotting? I'd, I'd spot all eight. Would you? I'd spot all late for this one. I think it deserves it. I don't think there's anything that it could do to be better. I think it is one of my favourite films. I mean, I, I think it's a very good film. Yeah. But it's not one of my favourites. Like, like, I very much enjoy it, but yeah. it, it's... it's It doesn't deserve to be put alongside your favourites. No. So, so it kind of doesn't have quite the same emotional effect as some of your favourite yeah, films. So it, it's a, yeah, so it's on the same sort of level, yeah. but it doesn't affect me in the same That's way. That's it. There's kind of objective quality and also yeah. kind of subjective quality, kind of the attachment you have to it, no matter yeah. how good the film is. I'm like, oh, but, that's that's such a good film. But can I relate to it? And does it touch me deep inside? No, because I'm not a druggie. Yeah, and fair what enough. does that say about you, Jamie? Hmm. Well, I mean, I think that'll be a conversation for another time. But... <laughs> Join us next week where we talk about Jamie's drug addiction. <laughs> yeah, so I would give it... I'd only spot seven of the eight trains. Spot seven of the eight trains. Yeah. So if you've watched the film and found something different or disagree with us in any way, let us feel know free comments. to let us know in the comments. Yeah, and give us your own rating. If you could spot out of eight trains how many trains he spotted in train spotting. Let, let us know how many let trains Let us know you how spotted. many trains you spotted tra- in train spotting. In train spotting, yeah. Yeah. Shall we plug our merch again? Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so two weeks ago we told you we were selling sandwiches as subjective t-shirts. This week we're selling different t-shirts. We're selling how many trains out of eight did you spot in train spotting yeah. on a t-shirt, which will be here. Here. It's beautiful. And Please we're buy them. They will have varying numbers of trains on them between one and eight. 
in some different have, colours. Some might not have any trains on them at all, <laughs> depending on how good you thought the film was. You buy a t-shirt with that number of trains on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we'll link that merch website down in the yes, description. Yes, we will. Is, that, is that the door with more crates of t-shirts that I hear? I think <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. joining us again. Um, we have been Jamie. And we also have been Joe. We've this been is Ambitious Films and, and where, where we, we review, review them. them you know? Sandwiches are subject. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and hit that bell up for notifications. Because uh, in two weeks you will be notified. Yeah, we'll be back again. We will. Do we know what we're going to be reviewing yet? I'm not sure we've decided yet. No, Shall we, we spontaneously say a film that we're going to review? Okay. In three, two, one. Two thousand and one. Actually, I think Blade Runner <laughs> will be a good one. So yeah, we'll review Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. Two weeks. Um, we hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. And we'll see you in two weeks. See you soon. Thank you for watching.